taking long Me and bro freakers, we don't get along No new friends, it's a theme song When you get on camera, better act right Don't forget who giving you the limelight Don't forget who giving you the bomb pipe Trips to Hawaii on them long flights I, 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 I Love it when that booty Not into the violence But the pussy I abuse Listen to these other news And I'm really not amused Whoever you are Wherever you may be Thank you so much For taking the time out To listen to this podcast But real quick Before we go any further I need you to go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe button, the rate and review, and all that good stuff that you know how to do so we can, you know, bring this content to you freshly every week. Number two thing that I need you to know is that this podcast is now coming to you as a part of the Impact Lounge. So, as a matter of fact, I'm sitting here wiping my forehead with these crisp, clean $100 bills that BQ has sent to me to my account uh, fresh through wire transfer because we just gonna be printing money, okay? Over here, Impact Lounge, talking about podcasts. Oh yeah, can you feel it? Can you feel it? I feel it. Okay, let's 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 let's, let's get into it. So today is Saturday, March seventh. Impact is in Atlanta for the A Town Beat Town as we speak, and here's five things I already know. Number one, Tessa versus Tyre too soon. Listen, we knew it was going to be controversial. People seeing two women going at it for the world title of a company. But we also knew it was going to be good. And a match like that deserves a build. Now look, y'all know where I stand on this. And if you don't, I'll tell you right now. Tyre is better than Tessa in pretty much every way. She's a, a great wrestler. She's very believable. Going against men or women, her character, she comes off so evil, and she's not as cartoonish with some of her facial expressions. Um, she really, I just think, checks every box in terms of a performer, and it's really time that we start talking about Taya as one of the best all-around performers in all of wrestling. So, I think Taya versus Tessa could have been, you know, a pay-per-view headlining match, and my thing is, if you're Impact, and if you really want to push the envelope with saying hey we're changing this we're doing something big here by having a woman as our champion then why not be willing to go all the way and put two women as a headliner of a pay-per-view because these two women have a backstory they've had the you know the triple a title um you know different companies they've battled and they've had great matches so why blow this off on an episode of impact to me that doesn't seem like good business but hey it's not my show. Number two, a star is born. Now, if y'all haven't been paying attention, little by little, they've been doing more and more to make Ace Austin into a star. It's just the little things. It's the little things like having him win the X Division title by knocking off Tessa Blanchard at the end of that ladder match. Having him, you know, do things like you know, go after people's moms and wives in, in a way that just the type of storylines this would really stand out and resonate with people. And the little things that he does too, you know, give him credit. When uh when he had his match with Tessa Blanchard and Taya interfered at the end of the match, you know, she comes in, she's beating up Tessa, Ace Austin jumps in front of the camera, looks in the camera and goes, I think I'm in love. And I'm like, yo, that is just a perfect expression of who this guy is, who the character is. He's a scumbag. He's a dirt ball. And I'm not sure I don't love him. All right? Like, you know, he's, he's a cool dude. Number three, I see you. I see you too. Or do I? Look, it was no coincidence that this I see you graphic first appeared on the impact after Tessa won. No, I'm sorry. It was the first impact that Tessa appeared as champion, and we have not seen Sammy Callahan since. So to me, it's easy to put two and two together. This is Sammy Callahan just trying to, you know, take some time off, regroup, and come back with a new attack mode. Chris Jericho does it all the time. I thought it was actually a nice little way to give Sammy a breather and come back refreshed. But then the more I thought about it, it's March. 
We haven't seen Sammy Callahan on Impact TV since mid-January. And it just makes me question, is Sammy Callahan really coming back? As a matter of fact, they did um, a little a little promo segment with the rest of the guys in OVE and they were backstage talking and they blatantly said, Sammy's not coming back. We need a new leader. Then I saw something on Twitter a few weeks ago where AEW was, uh, Sammy Callahan changed his Twitter to just have ones and zeros on it, like some sort of digital code. And AEW actually posted a tweet where they also used the ones and zeros very similar to what Sammy Callahan was doing, thereby kind of showing that they have some sort of association going on with Sammy Callahan. So it makes me wonder, is the ICU thing Sammy Callahan? Is it someone else? You know, um, Brody Lee, the former Luke Harper, does this thing where he has this long stare and he goes hey you know could that be the ICU thing what is going on here they've actually done a great job of creating some real mystery and I for one I have no idea who it is if I had to really pick somebody I still would think it's Sammy Callahan but I don't know I don't have the answer Sway number four does he hit and miss squad and I can even throw in the Deaners here. Listen, I kind of like what they tried to do a couple of weeks ago with the Desi Hit Squad. They had, um, oh my gosh, who's the guy? Is it is it is it Gander Singh? Uh, it was Rohit, Rohit Raju. He interfered in the match with the Rascals to cost them a chance at beating the North for the titles. And then... They, I think, beat the Rascals on the final episode of Impact. So, okay, cool. He's trying to make these guys look strong. But here's the problem, bro. You had these guys on TV for, what, three years now? And you've done nothing with them. You have them cleaning the Deaners trash, who you've also done nothing with. You can't do that. This ain't it, Chief. You can't just turn around and say, now we're supposed to care about these, these these people who you've done nothing with. Not only have you done nothing with, you've made them look terrible. How could anybody possibly care about the Desi Hit Squad at this moment? Please tell me. I'll wait. Number five. Michael Elgin and Eddie Edwards are going one-on-one -on -one in the final of the best of five series for their uh for the call your shot trophy and i couldn't care less these matches have been a yawn now i get it eddie edwards is a very respected wrestler he won the the noah title and he's one of the only americans to do that um Michael Elgin, he's been protected like the damn secret services around him. Like he's running for president since he came to Impact. I, I mean, nobody has been more protected than Michael Elgin. Uh, they both have, you know, Japan ties. And I think this is something that the, the, the people in charge in Impact looked at and said, hey, People like Japanese wrestling. These two guys were good in Japan. These guys can get together and do some Japanese style matches. And you know what? That was cool for a match or two. But five matches? Five matches? No, nobody want to see that. No, nobody want to see that. I mean, I... I'm pretty sure Michael Elgin is the one that's going to win. Because like I said, nobody's been protected as much as Michael Elgin. And... I think having big mean Michael Elgin be the one to take the title off Tessa Blanchard, she doesn't really lose any steam in doing it that way. So, you know, who knows? But, listen, I don't know. If it's me, I'd probably go with Elgin just because I don't see any more layers to this Eddie Edwards character. I don't see any more anything else fun to do with that. But, I mean, putting these two together... Man, I mean, it's it's like watching paint dry. Like, don't get me wrong, they wrestle hard. And if you really pay attention to the matches, the matches are good, hard-hitting matches. But I just don't care. I don't care. They don't have chemistry. It's not exciting. And I don't even care about the stakes. You've managed to take this call-your-shot trophy thing and make it the least interesting thing on the show. So, yes, Elgin, Edwards, who cares? All right. So this is the part where I'm about to say some things that you might not like. 
They might challenge your fandom. They might call you out a little bit on some things you think you know or you think you might know. But guess what? I'm here to tell you right now. We don't care. Let me tell you. Right, let me tell you. <laughs> we don't care. My man Stephen A. said it better than I could. So, you know, if you don't like what I got to say, tweet me. Get at me. Post me. Call me. Email me. Do whatever you got to do. Show up at my door, fam. Because guess what? Guess what, baby? We want the smoke. Talk to him. We want the smoke. Uh-huh. We want the smoke. Come on. And that's what it is. So here we go. Who's getting the smoke this week? Who's getting the smoke? Who's getting the smoky smoke? I'm going to tell you who's getting the smoke. Don Callis and Scott, Scott Demore. So here's the thing. I got to give credit where credit is due. Callis and Demore have brought stability to Impact. Look, before these guys got here, the bookers were changing every week. The, the, the name of the company was changing every week. They was potentially going out of business every month. I mean, look, it was no brand that anybody wanted to be associated with. I mean, like, to the point where, like, TNA was beyond the laughing stock. It was just, like so damaged people won't even admit that they even watched it like people pretending like they know aj styles from ring of honor and new japan give me a break that's just how bad people don't want to say they ever watched tna that's how bad it was and since callus and demore got to tna what have they done? They've turned this roster over like twice right the guys who were here saying y'all want to go to WWE they're like guess what Go ahead to WWE. And what they do, they brought new guys in and made new stars. They made a star out of Killer Cross. They made a star out of, um, uh, you know, Brian Cage about to, go, about, about to go get paid. They helped revive uh, John Morrison's career. You know, all of these people. And now you got guys like Ace Austin coming up. Tessa Blanchard coming up. They turned her into a star. So, you have to give these guys credit for what they have done. But you also got to be realistic. And realistically, where's the buzz? Where is the buzz? Now, I just said they turned Tessa into a star. As much of a star as they have turned Tessa into, she's not moving the needle at all. They did a historic, you know, history-making moment by... Putting the world title on a woman, that woman being Tessa Blanchard, as you well know. And it's done nothing to move the needle in terms of interest in Impact Wrestling. That's just the truth. That's just a fact. Michael Elgin, they brought him in from New Japan. Everybody loves New Japan. Great, 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 great. Bring in a New Japan guy. It's done nothing. It's, 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 nobody is out here talking about Michael Elgin. And that's no diss to Michael Elgin. I'm just saying they got to do something to create some buzz. Don Callis was even on the Busted Up a Radio show last week. He was on for a few segments. And people called in. Nobody wanted to talk about Impact. People wanted to talk to him about his days in ECW. You know, what it was like working with Paul Heyman. What it was like working with WWE. Nobody called in and asked him a question about what's going on in Impact. So if you are Don Callis, Scott Demore, you got to figure out some way to drum up some social media buzz, you know, like the way that Matt Hardy did when he did the, the final deletion. You know, that was the most popular that TNA or Impact had been probably in the last, good God, what, five, six years? You got to figure out some way to create some buzz because you have a good product right now. I almost wanted to relate that to some of the presidential candidates. Like, you might be saying something good, but if nobody's listening, it doesn't matter, right? And that's where Impact is right now. And if you are, you know, you know, um, Don Callis, right? Like, look, again, to give credit, I see the venues growing little by little, right? Like, so they're still playing Samstown Casino. But this year, Samstown Casino is a lot more full than it was last year. I'm seeing slight growth. But how long can you expect this slight growth to really be sustainable while AEW is playing, you know, five, six, seven thousand seat arenas week after week. They're coming to New Jersey in a few weeks and they're going to play a, 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 a 10,000 plus seat arena. So, I feel like Impact is in a spot where they need to make a jump. 
They just got to get more relevant. When people start having conversations and, and start talking about the variety of places there are to work in wrestling, people don't even mention Impact. They're like, oh, yeah, MLW and NWA. And, and Impact doesn't even come up. And that's not as an insult. It's just because there's no buzz. And guess what? That's on you, homie. You got to be the one to create that buzz. You being Don Callis, Scott DeMore, the powers that be, you know, Josh Matthews, whoever's in charge of, of drumming up some support for Impact Wrestling. Y'all got to be the ones. You, you can't just depend on the fans. I mean, look, there's things you can do. You know, like if you listen to any of BQ's podcasts, he's constantly giving suggestions about ways you can drum up support through your Impact Plus uh, shows, through the Twitch shows, through your social media marketing and performance. So don't, you know, like don't act like people are just supposed to start you know, supporting this product out of nowhere. You have to create the illusion that this product is popping. And if you are not doing that, the people are not going to think it's popping. If you're walking down the street and looking for a bar to go to, and there's a bar with nobody outside but you get in right now, but a bar with t- a line of 10 people outside, you're probably going to go get in the one with the line, get in the line of the 10 people. Even that means you got to wait to get inside because there's more people in there. So that looks like it's more popping. And... Right now, we don't know if there's anybody waiting online to get into Impact. You know what I mean? And so, the powers that be in charge of Impact Wrestling are not doing a good job right now creating a buzz around these shows, man. I watched the episode of AEW last week that was just so dope because the crowd was hot for the whole show. When you hear people out there singing Chris Jericho's uh, theme music. Like, he's a bad guy, right? You see NXT, people cheering for Adam Cole. He's supposed to be a bad guy, right? But that's the level of fan and crowd engagement that these other products have. Where is that at with Impact? Talk to me. Impact Wrestling recently brought back its latest incarnation of its gut check competition in which... They bring in, you know, wrestlers from the independent scene and let them compete for an opportunity to be signed by Impact Wrestling. Now, when this show originally, when we originally saw the the original format of this show uh, back in, what was like, 2009, 2010, something like that, um, you know, we were introduced to, you know, Jay Bradley, um, oh gosh, maybe like Sam Shaw, um, Joey Ryan famously had the beef with, uh, was it Tat? No, it was Al Snow. He had a beef with Al Snow where the fans voted for him and, you know, they, they, he didn't get picked. And so, you know, he, he went crazy. I thought it was actually a really fun angle and it really, you know, just made the whole thing very interesting. This format is totally different. They're going with more of a reality show style. And so, you know, that in and of itself kind of takes away from it a little bit because, you know, listen, man, these are wrestlers. They're not actors. And so you're going to get some bad acting. And good Lord, Scott Demore is the king of the bad acting. He has the camera two inches from his face. And he's, you know, cutting promos, talking crap about the wrestlers, you know, who are competing for uh, <laughs> competing for spots in, in, in Impact Wrestling. But... You know, all those things aside, I have actually been enjoying um, Gut Check. On the first two episodes, they introduce you to to the wrestlers. Um, one thing that I noticed, one of the big takeaways that I noticed was these are mostly big guys. And I think that's actually, I think that's a great thing. If you look at the landscape of wrestling, a lot of the guys who are becoming popular, you know, getting signed, getting contracts, it's a lot of, you know, guys who are... Uh, you know, birth from that cruiserweight style, sons of the, of the, you know, the, the school of the young bucks, you know what I mean? Like all that stuff. And there's a place for that, but there's also a place for that larger than life. You know, that, that guy who just looks like a believable tough guy. Like you can love, you know, Adam Cole's flippy fake looking wrestling all you want to, but the reality is he just doesn't look like somebody that's going to beat somebody up, right? When you see somebody come out, there's a big guy, muscles, rough looking. You can easily believe this is a guy who's going to put somebody in harm's way. It's just, that's just simple psychology, right? And it's not just, it's not a size thing. So, so any of you five foot four people out there who have been taking jujitsu your whole life, please don't get offended, right? Because 
We know that short people, there's plenty of short people who can fight. It's not about size. It's about do you look like an imposing person, right? That's that's what it is. And what I noticed with this crop of talent here, you know, guys like Shogun and um, the, the 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 two brothers with the with the dreads, you know, they went with a lot of a lot of you know bigger guys. Even Tony Gunn, who's not a bigger guy, he's still pretty jack. So I like that. Like let's let's bring that look back to wrestling. I like that because it'll at least differentiate impact from a lot of what we're seeing on let's say NXT and AEW. So that's something that stood out to me. Um, another thing was. <clears throat> again the bad acting man the bad acting like they they just they contrive like little scenarios right they they did something where you know tony gunn supposedly posted a picture on social media and that really pissed off you know johnny bravo who was a trainer and he was just giving everybody crap about it um you know these contrived situations you know i don't know it is what it is but the show, I've been enjoying it so far. If there was anybody I'd be rooting for, I would probably say it would be um, <clears throat> it, it would be Shogun, the big black dude. Although he's been kind of sloppy in his uh, in his his matches so far, and the um, gosh, what are these guys' name? Oh my gosh, Kings Ransom. That's their name, Kings Ransom, the tag team. I think they should take both of those guys and maybe even Tony Gunn. Look, Impact can't. They can't take in too much new talent at once. But the reality is this. You can bring on all those guys, but you only have two hours of TV time. And you want to feature people when you bring them on. So when you bring somebody on, you have to have a plan to kind of get them over, as they say, with your audience. So you can't just, you know have an influx of, you know, four new acts all at once and expect them to all get over. So, you know, more than likely only one or two people from this group is going to actually get a contract to come to Impact. If it's me, I'd probably take, you know, either Tony Gunn or Shogun and I'd take the... Uh, I take the, the the King's Ransom as a tag team, just because look, you could just you could use that influx, especially um, when it comes to the tag teams. You could use guys to come in and just freshen up the matches that they got going on. I mean, look, bad acting aside, you know, contrived situations aside, I am interested to see you know who comes next. Well, what I am going to do, I think, is going to be the next step for me. I'm going to start looking up some of these guys' indie matches and seeing where they go. So. Um, that's my, my gut check review next week. In addition to gut check, I think I'm going to also review, uh, the diary with Tessa Blanchard. So if you guys, if you watch that, let me know what you think. Send me some tweets, send me a message in the Facebook, uh, in the Facebook group, um, the impact fan nation, Facebook group. I'm a part of that. Let me know what you guys think. <laughs> All right. That's our show for this week. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, you know, like, rate, subscribe. If you're listening to this on, you know, iTunes or SoundCloud or YouTube, you know, pass it along, share it with somebody, uh, post it on somebody's page, tell a friend to tell a friend so we can keep this conversation going. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen. I'm TW and I will talk to you soon. I don't like kiss me, let's just keep it